Shift Happens podcast. Without a smart governance plan, collaboration tools such as Microsoft 365 can quickly become the wild, wild west. It's why all business should be setting up guardrails to help employees safely create and access the functions they need. Governance tools can block access to sensitive data, links, or files, and they help your colleagues keep their work organized. So what's the secret to good governance? I'll get the scoop from Ryan Haifman, Associate Systems Analyst at Kohler, where his team manages 20,000 seats in Microsoft 365. We'll learn how the kitchen and bath giant has, shall we say, turned off the faucet to prevent leaky data and enable remote work. Let's get to it. Welcome back to the Shift Happens Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Raymond Sai, Chief Brand Officer here at AppPoint and Modern Workplace Professional. You know, I'm so excited for today's episode as I'm joined by Ryan Haithman, Associate Systems Analyst at Kohler. Ryan, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks, Doc. Th thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here and share our story and give some insight as to uh, how we're using AppPoint's uh, product. Ryan, first and foremost, uh, thank you for joining us in our um, last shift happens conference. Your session was well received. But for our listeners who may not be familiar with Kohler, can you talk a little bit more about Kohler as a company? It, it's not just kitchen and bath hardware, right? Yeah, that's what people typically think, right? You go up and say, hey, I work for Kohler, and they think, oh, you know, bathtubs and toilets, urinals, sinks, things like that. And, and, and we do make those products. That's one of our largest business groups. Um, but we do have a, a few more. We consist of four business families, kitchen and bath being the biggest. We also have a hospitality group that, you know, is famous for our golf courses. We have the Ryder Cup mm -hmm. coming up here in September, uh, a couple of courses over in the Europe. We also have an interiors group that does uh, a lot of interiors work and designing. Um, and then we have a, a global powers group that does any, anything from generators to engines. Um, and that business has really taken off for Kohler in the past couple of years. So a, a diverse company, a very family rich company. Um, John Michael Kohler started it back um, the, the, the year is slipping me, but uh, his great grandson now runs the company, David Kohler. Um, so a very uh, company rich in history. Wow, sounds like a very expansive and diverse set of business. So how large is the organization and where's the company headquartered? So we're headquartered out of Kohler, Wisconsin, uh, a, a, a town that grew around the company. Um, and it, we just hit, uh, I believe, 20,000 licensed users for Microsoft 365. Um, a little bit over that, if you, uh, you know, include other manufacturing associates that may not be licensed with M365, but a very large and, and growing company um and, and a global company at that fantastic now speaking of microsoft 365 users and licensed user so can you kind of talk more about what are some of the key services your colleagues use and how have those needs changed in the last 18 months with remote work yeah uh we are very big on teams um our adoption exploded uh at, at, on the onset of the pandemic um i know we went over 100 percent adoption in like the first week um, we had to um, bring on a lot of virtual desktop uh, environments for our associates to use if we weren't ready for them to go completely remote with Teams mm -hmm. and, and SharePoint in their email. Um, so there was a lot of nuances that came with that. Our IT staff, um, based on the updates that we got, did a, a very uh, great job with getting ready for that. Um, but yeah, you know, I would say Microsoft Teams is, is a huge tool for us, everything from communicating with their team members to holding live events. That's been a, a huge thing, especially for our Kohler leadership team, mm -hmm. like David Kohler and his direct reports, getting those events scheduled remotely. Um, we also heavily, heavily rely on SharePoint. Obviously, SharePoint is a back end of Teams, but for the document repository functionality, uh, Kohler is trying our very best to get off of our on-premise network NAS Hmm. file shares and onto SharePoint for cloud-based uh, document collaboration. So Ryan, let's let's unpack that transition. You mentioned that because of the pandemic, the usage and adoption blew up. Prior to that, what technologies did you all rely on? Were, were you already using some of the Microsoft 365 services or this was just the 
the impetus to really take advantage of all these different uh, capabilities? Great question. So I think part of the reason we were successful with bringing teams to support our work from home uh, scenarios was because we already were adopting them pre-pandemic. Mm. Um, we actually, and I say this, that, you know, we thankfully had AppPoint being brought into Kohler um, prior to COVID uh, and prior to knowing that it was going to start. We had, you know, said, okay, Teams is going to be turned on globally for our associates. We need and we see the growth of number of sites, Teams workspaces. We have to have some governance around this. Mm. We need some way to rein this in. And we had that in place. March of 2020 was our go live. Um, and then it just took off. Um, so thankfully, all those teams that were created, um, thousands of teams actually, were all captured in governance. No, I, we really appreciate and grateful for our partnership. And for our listeners who may not be familiar with our solutions or AppPoint technologies, uh, maybe Ryan, you can kind of talk about and walk through how you, you and your organization uh, came to the thinking that uh, an extended solution like AppPoint Cloud Governance would be needed for your team's deployment. Because some of our listeners out there may just be in their early journey of deploying Teams or deploying Microsoft 365 and just have a good understanding of what these extended solutions can offer uh, potentially to them as well. Yeah, yeah, great question. So I, I honestly wasn't in the discussions to sort of look at other governance solutions. I did get a story though of why we went with AppPoint. Um, the, you know, they were very accommodating, very willing to do sort of um, test runs or proof of concepts for us. Um, but there really isn't a lot out there, at least when we looked. Microsoft was kind of like, make it in PowerShell. Uh, another company was like, yeah, we're going through an acquisition. We can't really take on large companies. And then there was AppPoint that seemed to check all of our boxes and, and sort of meet us where we needed them. Um, the, the big, uh, sort of box to check for us was retention and, mm. and the, the sort of renewal process that we wanted to start to define because we were looking at the number of sites we had from when we went to SharePoint online, when they were created, when they were last modified and seeing such sort of mess in that area, but also looking at, um, the network file shares that we were going to bring on and we would see file shares that. Uh, had had files modified in 2002, 2003, mm -hmm. really long. And we didn't want that to plague our Office 365 tenant. We wanted mm -hmm. some sort of mechanism that was driven automa automatically and interacted with the owners of these workspaces to make sure our tenant stayed clean and stayed secure. Um, so we sort of took a, a minimum viable product approach, I think, with mm -hmm. what cloud governance offers. We obviously have a lot of a lot more opportunity in the product still. Um, but that was sort of our initial goal and our thought process at the start. No, that's, that's a fantastic clarification. And for those listening, I know governance is a huge word, right? And governance may mean different things for different people. Really, when you think about Microsoft 365, if I break down governance, it falls into three pillars. One is governance around the creation of a lot of these workspaces. As Ryan brought it up, you know, how are sites created? Who can create sites? How long would these sites live? And it could be teams as well. It could be groups. So there's that one bucket, the creation of workspaces, or as the industry would call it, containers, right? Where data lives, where people interact. Then the second area of governance is how do you manage these workspaces? Again, Teams. Teams is fantastic, but at the same time, with great power comes great responsibility. Uh, Ryan mentioned, you know, you all have 20,000 users. Obviously, you want to empower your colleagues and associates to take advantage of Teams. But at the same time, as they, for example, create Teams, how do you ensure that proper content is being put in there, the right people are being invited, or sharing of content is appropriate, right? And we can't expect people to remember every single rule, every single box to check or configuration to set. And, and that's another area of governance that we have to consider. How do you manage these workspaces and the data in it? The last piece, and I think this is where Ryan brought up, is how do you govern the information uh, retention, information lifecycle? Let's say the SharePoint site's not being used anymore or the team's not being used anymore. What happens to it? Do we get rid of it? Do we archive it? Do we have to retain it because of... Sarbanes-Oxley compliance. So those are the three buckets of governance that 
every organization has to think about. Now, do they need an extended tool? Not really. Uh, if out of the box meets their needs, fantastic. If you can power shell it, fantastic. But what we find, especially in larger organizations with diverse groups and use cases, uh, certainly a, a technology like cloud governance can help and support you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and talking about diverse groups, uh, over the last six months, we've found those diverse groups that are asking for specific instances to be created for them, like our project management office, uh, like our new product design teams. Mm. You know, they have specific needs around their workspaces that they use that doesn't necessarily match the rest of the company, whether it's, uh, you know, our retention policy, how long we want to keep files for projects or new product designs and, and you know, products that stay throughout their life cycle. And we, you know, started with, like I said, our minimum viable product, but we're going to have to extend those and make exceptions uh, for those other groups. Fast forward to today, as you've described, Microsoft 365 is well adopted. AppPoint Cloud Governance has helped supporting the usage of it. What are some of the positive business impact or positive business results you're seeing as a result of all this groundwork you put in around proper governance and uh, essentially helping people to make make it easy to do the right thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, I would, that, that, that's a great question. And we, you know, kind of ask that question often in our project meetings uh, for AvPoint. Um, I, I think it is the understanding of what people have ownership of. Mm. Um, you know, we have project managers that create teams on a daily basis. You have maybe managers that create any teams or SharePoint sites or groups. Um, and they're creating these, you know, maybe a dozen of them every other month or, mm. you know, a lot a year. And we're seeing that as they're assigning themselves as contacts or their, their reports as contacts, there's an accountability step there that sort of allows those people to remember that they have those workspaces and don't forget about them, gives a, a level of visibility that we didn't have before. Uh, Kohler did struggle and still does struggle with, you know, an associate comes into Kohler, what should I have access to? You know, that's mm. a question we want to answer and it's going to be a tough one. So I really like that aspect of it. Um, there is an option in my hub that we use that uh, gives the ability to kind of see what exists in Kohler from a team's perspective, even if they're not private or public or if they're not public, sorry, um, that they can go out and see what team is there. Um, so I, I would say that those are two big, big ones. So for our listeners out there, right, as they're thinking through this journey, and I'm sure just like you, a lot of organizations have adopted Microsoft 365 and Teams. What are some of the criteria do you think are most important to good governance for Microsoft 365? What tips do you offer on how organizations should think about their governance journey? Can, can you walk them through, for example, uh, within Kohler, what the process looks like from the initial, let's say, you know, creation of a workspace and and who gets one, who who needs approval. So maybe you can walk through that so our listeners can can get a good glimpse of, especially for those who who just want to start the journey. A good point that uh, Jay, who I worked with uh, for the session that I talked at, he mentioned that turning off certain valves, but giving an opportunity for users to still use the tool, but in a different way. You know, we don't want to remove the ability to create workspaces altogether and not have a door for users to walk through, right? So we turned off the ability to natively create teams in the Teams app, but we gave them the opportunity to create teams without approval of IT through MyHub. Mm. Now, that was sort of our, our sort of gateway. So every time they walk through that door of creating a workspace, it's captured in governance. Now, they don't mm. need approval from their managers or for IT or for anything else. It, it gets created, and that allows us to serve those diverse groups that we talked about. It gives us the ability to say, you know, a team needs to be created today for something quick, whether it's a COVID response team or a SharePoint site for that matter. Um, they can just create it, and they don't have to wait for approvals. Um, so I think that's a big one. Another thing is, I touched on it earlier, is just the, we call it um, the renewals. Uh, mm. We have renewal tasks. Uh, that's a huge part of it. Um, to have some sort of checking in on these workspaces, making sure the contacts are correct, because we all know organizations go through reorgs. Uh, contacts and roles can change for workspaces. Permissions can change. 
And, and a lot of the time, these users and owners of these workspaces just don't have the time to do that when these reorgs take place. So if there's a task that's sent to them on a biannual, a biannual basis or semi-annual, um, they can do that in a task that's simple and quick and, mm. and it sort of meets the audit finding that we had open for that internally. Got it. And for those listeners that may not be familiar with MyHub, MyHub is a Teams app that comes with uh, AppPoint Cloud Governance. You can download it on the Teams store, but that's essentially a way for your users to interact with our technologies, cloud governance in an easy way. You know, Ryan, I described my hub as like the Pinterest for Teams, right? It helps organize or a Pinterest for Microsoft 365, frankly, because it helps organize all the workspaces. But in addition, as Ryan mentioned, people can use that as a gateway to create teams, SharePoint sites, groups, what have you. And then on the IT side, they would have visibility into all that activity that takes place. Yeah. Another thing I'll, I'll quickly touch on that I, I forgot was uh, providing the solution for them to create the workspaces. But a lot of the times users don't understand what they need to create. When do you create a team versus a SharePoint site versus a group? Um, in my hub, you know, gives us the opportunity to create set up somewhat of a questionnaire. Now, ours isn't as robust as I know it can be. Uh, we do provide descriptions as to what these workspaces are intended for so that if a user does, you know, have some sort of confusion, they can get some insight into what, hey, this is a team, this makes the most sense versus ah, SharePoint site makes more sense here. Um, so I think that's an important step too. Uh, you can't just make the assumption users know exactly what Teams purpose is. Sometimes it seems that Microsoft doesn't know what Teams and SharePoint purpose is, but um, we need to make that a more clear dis distinction for them. And boy, Ryan, that that hits the nail on the head. I mean, we get that questions a lot. I'm sure every single day you get that question a lot. It's like, when to use what? On one hand, there's so many rich services and tools and technologies. But on the other hand, since most of everyone doesn't work with this every single day, you know, it, it's hard for them to understand unless they're using it regularly. You know, when do I need a team, a SharePoint site, a Yammer community, et cetera? Exactly. Yep. Now, um, when we think about the usage and we talked about governance, when people are using this, right, how, how do you all think about guest access and external sharing? I'm sure in a large organization like yours, there are scenarios around people working with organizations or vendors outside of Kohler. How do you address that? Because that's a natural cadence of work today. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. And one, you know, we're still trying to figure out a little bit. Uh, from a security mindset, we've sort of blocked and shut off other avenues of sharing things like Dropbox, like Box. Uh, there was another one we were using that was a little bit more small. Um, but blocking those and saying, okay, Office 365 is the tool we're using, and it mm -hmm. does have external sharing capabilities and pushing them towards this portal that we have to enter a user's name with their email, uh, set yourself as a sponsor, and it sends out the, the Microsoft invitation process and does it that way. Um, it's not something we think is perfect. I think we want to improve upon it. I think AppPoint's going to have a, a a pretty large seat at the table when it does come to reinventing that. Uh, we we know that AppPoint has uh, that external access sort of trackability, like it, it like it does mm. with workspaces, um, where you can have contacts that sponsor an external user. You can get sort of insights into what that external user is has access to or is using, uh, and we really like that because. Um, that is a concern of securities that, you know, people are in our environment and we don't know what they're seeing or what they mm -hmm. actually have access to. And want, we want that trackable and auditable. So yep. uh, we're going to be definitely looking at in the near future. And Ryan, especially in the last 18 months, just working with customers, even internally, right? We're, we're now getting uh, questions from customers saying, you know, forget the external, even internal, how can we easily figure out uh, content that's being shared and if it was shared further. So for example, out of the box, I can't really tell you uh, how many documents I shared last week and who I shared it with and if they shared it with somebody else, right? Now, I'm sure we can figure it out. IT can help me, but frankly, as a as a day-to-day -day user, there's no easy way for me to do that. And then now you layer in external users for that matter, um, it could be challenging. Yeah. Yeah, that 
That is a big challenge of ours. Uh, we call it the wild, wild west of you know mm. OneDrive and SharePoint. Is you have all these files in your OneDrive. I think that's a big area of concern right now. Is OneDrive is there? You're sharing links with people you don't typically mm -hmm. share your entire OneDrive. Where are all these share shareable links existing in my company? Um, I think we've seen a couple sort of future states that HavePoint has for renewal tasks for maybe a SharePoint sites and Microsoft Teams that gives a more modern view of what's being shared out of those workspaces. Um, I know there's another product of called Policy and Insights that may mm -hmm. have an opportunity to fill that gap for us as well. But I know that's on the mind of our VP of security. Mm -hmm. You know, we just want users to have an awareness of what's being sure. shared of, of their uh, content. No, Ryan, that's a great point. I mean, being able to know what's being shared internally or externally or how long it was shared. Yeah, I don't think people are malicious when they share content. It's just a natural rhythm of work, right? Where I'm sharing a Word document with Ryan so we can collaborate. But then maybe a few weeks later, Ryan realizes, hey, Jim from the other department may benefit from this document or a slide or Excel file. And then Ryan shares it with somebody. But then I won't know that. So having a way to put guardrails in place and mechanisms in place so any type of risk can be prevented. In fact, maybe we can automate it and have a blanket policy and say, we're not going to allow content with credit card numbers to be shared externally. That's it. There's a lot of opportunities, certainly, for, um, for automation to ensure governance, but this is part of the exciting work that's really out there as Microsoft 365 adoption flourishes. Now, Ryan, I'm, I'm sure we can go on and on and talk about governance, but before we wrap up, if you have one or two advice to make shift happen in your organization as they use Microsoft 365, uh, what, what, what parting words do you have for folks to step up their Microsoft 365 governance? You know, I would start by saying, uh, understand your users and understand their ability to change and then craft your communication plan around that. Make sure that your users understand if you're turning off things that you're going to communicate that it's being turned off and where the new avenue exists. That's a huge part of it, but also uh, providing that answer to your users as to why you're doing this. You know, why are we using this new uh, governance tool? Why am I creating it through AppPoints, MyHub versus natively in Teams? Like that does, it's, I'm doing the same thing, just, just in a different area with maybe more questions. So providing those answers that they have clarity on it, and then also providing knowledge as to how to complete certain tasks that may come their way. Um, why am I getting a renewal task? I haven't touched my team in 183 days. What's this inactivity task that's needing to be done? Or, or why is my team archived? I didn't touch it like that, but it's maybe something automated out of that. Um, also looking at the minimum viable product. I think that's another thing too. It's really easy to overwhelm a larger group of users, even a smaller group of users who aren't really knowledgeable. If you introduce a governance solution with tons of services, tons of questions, um, and, 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 uh, and other actions in that, um, that maybe exist somewhere else, um, you, you may overwhelm your users. So we are definitely sort of a crawl, walk, run approach uh, to AppPoint. And um, that, that's a, a big ad advice from, from my part and seeing how our users are adapting to certain things. We've, we've done certain things like uh, renewals, right? That was a big change for our users to understand that. And then we introduced services like changing contacts or changing uh, your, your workspace policy. And that was something that our users really took well and didn't have any questions on. So you kind of start to see how your users react to certain changes. And, and after that, then you can understand, okay, I'm going to introduce uh, external access management now. And okay, now they have a background knowledge of renewals and they're used to that. So maybe that's an easier transition. You know, I love how you describe all this, right? So in the end, it's not just IT telling people what to do but really partnering with the business, understanding their needs, their use cases, and, and IT providing all the mechanisms and support and uh, capabilities so in the end can help them to get their jobs done better. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. We want Microsoft Teams and SharePoint to be a tool that they continually turn to, uh, but we want to be an IT organization that, that can govern it um, effectively 
and make sure security is still at the forefront in, a, in our mindset. Fantastic. Well, Ryan, thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity to connect. And uh, we look forward to continue working with you and support your journey. Of course, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Shift Happens Podcast. Thanks for listening. As Ryan said, a good governance policy isn't designed to make life difficult. In fact, it's the opposite. By helping your employees create the right workspaces, access and store data and manage life cycles, you're empowering them with the necessary parameters to stay connected, organized, and safe. I'm inspired by the great governance work going on at Kohler, especially as folks shifted to work from home. But strong governance, of course, has big value in the physical office as well. As your organization looks at the months ahead, perhaps offering a hybrid model, be sure to make governance part of the game plan. If you like today's episode, please leave a review for the Shift Happens podcast on Apple Podcasts or whatever platform you use to listen. I also invite you to tune in for our new Ask Ducks bi-weekly podcast where I answer your questions about Microsoft 365 in the modern workplace. Email me an audio file of your question to askducks at avpoint.com and you could win a $100 Amazon gift card. We'll see you next time. Podcast. Shift Happens Podcast. Shift Happens Podcast. 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 Podcast.